Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Dustin Carroll. And I'm Danielle Percival. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Sports. Well, the Troy baseball team did something they haven't done in two years this past weekend. But it wasn't exactly something to be proud of. The team was swept by Florida International. It's the first time the Trojans have been swept since April of 2010 against Louisiana Lafayette. The Golden Panthers took Game 1 Friday night 11-7 and handed Tyler Ray his third loss of the season. The teams were tied at 6, but a four-run seventh inning gave the Panthers the lead for good. Logan Pierce extended his hit streak to 19 games, and it went to 20 games on Saturday, but his streak continuing didn't help the Trojans end their skid. Troy was in the lead heading into the bottom of the eighth inning, but allowed three runs and lost 5-3. Ryan Brady was the starting pitcher for the Trojans, but Thomas Alston came in and pitched four and a third innings of relief work and was nearly unhittable. Alston struck out five and only allowed one hit in the outing. Then on Sunday, the Trojans fell to FIU 4-2. Joe Hernandez got the loss in his first start in conference play. He held FIU to just three runs on four hits and struck out five over five and a third innings of work. Troy had six hits in the game, but none of those from Logan Pierce and drew seven walks from five FIU pitchers. However, the Trojans stranded 10 base runners in the game. Here's head coach Bobby Pierce with his thoughts moving forward. Another tough weekend for our team. Um, we've had a tough year to this point. Uh, right side is a lot left to play and a lot to play for. So uh, we're going to try to stay on task and uh, kind of refocus uh, our goals and uh, try to get this thing turned around so we can win some games and move forward. Heading into Tuesday night's game, the Trojans were on a six-game losing streak. But as Justin McNally shows us, by the way the game turned out, clearly they didn't want to make it seven. On Tuesday night, the Trojans took Whoop Jack State to a whole new level. While pounding out 15 hits, the Trojans were able to swing momentum in their favor and hang on to a 15-7 victory over the visiting Gamecocks and end their six-game losing streak. The Trojans jumped out to an early 3-0 lead in the first, and head coach Bobby Pierce was happy that his team was able to get off to a fast start. Uh, like the way we started tonight's game with the three runs in the first. Uh, certainly like the way we continued to score. I think the second inning was the only inning we didn't score. Multiple runs in all the other innings of the game. The Gamecocks tied it back up in the second and held the Trojans scoreless in the bottom half of that inning, which would be the only time either one of those things happened. The Chargers continued the onslaught behind a combined seven RBIs from Danny Collins and Logan Pierce, but momentum really went in their favor after the Trojans added a fourth inning home run from a familiar face. For a team that's been struggling as of late, the Trojans bats came alive tonight, scoring multiple runs in seven out of eight innings. One of those runs came from a home run off the bat of freshman catcher Jake Harrell. It wasn't just great hitting that propelled the Trojans to victory. Trojan pitchers William Teal, Garrett McHenry, and Jeremy McGowan combined to give up just two hits through the first five innings. Ryan Brady came on in relief and struck out four batters through two innings of work, and A.J. Howard came in to pitch the eighth. The Gamecocks gave the Trojans the scare by scoring three in the top of the ninth, but Nate Hill and Thomas Austin were able to seal the win for the Trojans. The Trojan offense acknowledged how important the pitching staff was to their success. Oh, it's always huge when the pitching comes out and just dominates. Um, you know, that puts a little less pressure on us to do what we can do, and um, obviously you saw tonight where, you know, when we don't have as much pressure, we can just get, get our swings in and um, get some balls off the bat and, and score some runs. You teach your players to fight back every inning uh, down to the last out, and uh, Jack State really did that, and then we knew we had to – we threw our two best guys in that last inning, and we found a way to get out of it. With the win, the Trojans improved to 14-18 and 18 on the year. Justin McNeely, Children Sports Now. While the baseball team didn't have any success this past weekend, the softball team did have a little luck in the Bluegrass State. They started the weekend series against Western Kentucky off with a big 9-1 win Friday, but couldn't score any more runs in the remaining games of the series. Troy lost 8-0 in the first game of a doubleheader and lost 2-0 in the rubber game of the series Saturday afternoon. A two-run homer from Kelsey Maddox was all the runs the Hilltoppers needed for the win. Ashley Rainey took the loss, pitching six innings, allowing just two runs on four hits while striking out three and walking none. The Trojans returned home on Tuesday afternoon for a doubleheader against Kinsaw State, and as Courtney Addison shows us, they were able to build on the momentum in the doubleheader.
After coming off of a rough weekend and having almost 25 scoreless innings, the Troy softball team was finally able to get the bats going and mercy rule the Kinsaw State Owls in the second game of a doubleheader Tuesday night. Most importantly, our, our girls have had been on a big hitting slump, uh, obviously dating back through the Western Kentucky series. They didn't realize that we hadn't scored, and I think they brought forth some pride to, to battle and fight through that in that second game. Freshman J.C. Felt got the start on the mound and picked up the win for Troy, improving her record to 7-6. and six. I felt allowed four hits, struck out none, and walked three. The Trojans were held scoreless until the fourth inning when a few owl errors allowed Troy to put three runs on the board. Throughout the game, Troy was able to scatter ten hits, and Hayden Gann led the Trojans at the plate going three for four with two RBIs. Here's Coach Davis's thoughts on the freshman pitching duo and the team's approach at the plate. Their three and four hitters have given us havoc throughout their careers, and for them to be able to keep them in the park and then really not give up any earned runs, couldn't be happier. And this game is about pitching. And uh, so it's a great sign for us. If our two freshmen will continue their growth and their performance, um, you know, and our bats will continue to get stronger mentally, uh, we'll be okay come tournament time. The team was given time to reflect on their performance after the first game against Kentaw State. And after regrouping, Troy bounced back to defeat the Owls 8-0 in five innings, improving Troy's season record to 24-15. and we tend to play pretty well at home, and they were very embarrassed. Uh, we gave them a little time in the locker room, and uh, a couple of seniors came down and said there were some tears up there, and they were all very frustrated and very upset. And I'm really proud of how they just you know, held their composure, came down, uh, held the game close you know, defensively with good pitching, and then just kind of exploded and, and took care of business. Courtney Addison, Trojan Sports Now. Football season is still about five months away, and I'm bringing it up any chance I get. But the big story this week isn't even about the 2012 season. Hello 2013 and hello Vault Hemingway Stadium. Troy announced Monday they will be traveling to face Ole Miss on November 16, 2013. This will be the first time these teams have ever met on the gridiron and the Trojans will be playing both Mississippi teams of the SEC in 2013. They'll be making the return trip to Mississippi State on September 21st after the Bulldogs come to Veterans Memorial Stadium on September 15th this season. And for this year's Trojan football team, they may not have had an opponent, but they did rack up some impressive offensive numbers in their second scrimmage of the season. Starting quarterback Corey Robinson didn't connect for a touchdown during T-Day, but had two in the game in Phoenix City this past Friday. DJ Taylor was the star running back in the first scrimmage, but Friday night it was Sean Southward that was the standout, with a 55-yard rushing touchdown on the first possession of the game for the White Squad. And in case you're wondering, it was another close game, but this time it was the Cardinal defeating the White Squad 34-31. And the Troy Trojans will be welcoming a new member to the Sunbelt family. Georgia State University will be joining the Sunbelt Conference in the 2013-2014 academic year. The Panthers athletic program was the original founding member of the Sunbelt Conference back in 1976 before leaving the conference in 1981. Georgia State will be participating in 19 collegiate sports in the Sunbelt Conference. The Troy women's tennis team continued its winning ways at home by defeating Alabama State Monday afternoon seven games to zero. The Trojans swept all three doubles matches and all six singles matches and did not drop a single set in the singles matches. The men's tennis team was also in action against Alabama State Monday, and the men also defeated the Hornets seven games to love, improving their record to five and 16. The women's teams hit the court again Wednesday, falling to Sanford six to one. That ended the Trojans' six-game winning streak. The Trojans dropped a tight doubles point and had two singles matches ends prematurely due to injury. After being down by 12 strokes heading into the final round of the Sanford Women's Intercollegiate, the Troy Women's ten Golf Team made a run to the top of the leaderboard to win by one stroke over Middle Tennessee. The Trojans finished Monday's two rounds at 37 over par but managed a 301 team score in the third round to advance to the championship. Individually for the Trojans, senior Haley Lawrence finished in third place with an even par 72 in the final round and finished the tournament with a 222 at 6 over par. The Troy track and field team headed to the Plains over the weekend for the Tiger Track Classic. Nikola Bola placed second in the men's hammer throw, breaking his own school record with a distance of 61.7 meters. The men's 4x100 team placed first collegiately with a time of 40.66. The team was composed of Benjamin Martin, Thaddeus Curtis, Philip Pritchard, and Nico Freeman. Larry Henry placed third in the men's high jump with a distance of 2.7 meters. Martins Fieldaves placed third in the men's javelin with a distance of 69.11 meters. Still to come on Trojan Sports Now, we'll, take, we'll look at the Middle Tennessee series at home for the baseball team and softball on the road. But first, let's take a look back at the preseason expectations for the softball team from the head coach herself. 
Stick around for more Toby Sports Now. Trojan Sports Now.